All right, guys. Today uh, here at Western Tech, we're uh, we're starting you guys off on your digital multimeter usage. And what we like to do here is we always want to make sure that number one, we know what tests we're going to do first. Number two, then we're going to set our meter to the appropriate position. And today, Rob, you can go ahead and set that to ohms. Nope. Set your dial first. Okay. And then go ahead and put your leads in. And on this meter here, we have a common which is our black one that's always going to be in there and then our volts and ohms use the same lead right here so you put your red in that one and we always test the meter itself first to make sure it works so we're going to touch our two leads together and can you see that the meter can you see that on there is actually uh, showing continuity you go ahead and take it away that's why I don't like the auto how it kind of jumps all over the place well, we have OL, we've had some, you say, outer limits, overload, we have no continuity, so we know that our meter is working fine. You're not going to be able to see what we're doing right here. We're actually going to test the brake switch. This is what would tell your brake light to turn on. But here's one that's off a motorcycle, and you kind of get an idea of what's going on, guys. Uh, you remember in class we talked about this. We said that we're either dealing with control circuits or we're dealing with grounds. And uh, a lot of you guys are getting so focused on the ground wire of the switch, and that's not what we have going on. We're interrupting the power side of this. So what we think about is power is going to come through here from a fuse source on the bike. Uh, when this switch is pulled down, there's a spring under here that you can't see that's going to actually make contact in here, and that's going to allow that power to go through this wire and back to the actual brake light. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to help Rob out here. We're going to, we're going to disconnect the switch here. So all we're really worried about is the switch and not the harness side of the motorcycle. So Rob's going to stick a lead in uh, either side of this. There's no polarity when we're doing continuity here either, right? Nope. Now, we do not want continuity right now. If we had continuity, our switch is out of adjustment. If you're doing like a, a starter switch, you get a big problem because that means the starter would be engaged all the time. A turn signal switch, a headlight switch, anything like that. But this particular switch, can you see this in the video where it's actually threaded? So we adjust this, and I'll talk about that more in a second. So I'm going to go ahead here. Now, we see that we were getting continuity. Now, I think what's happening here is we might have been touching each other here. And we can see that we're losing it and gaining it. We want this to be able to just stay on all the time. So we have a problem with our brake light here. I'm going to go ahead and take it off auto range. I'm going to get it just to ohms here and see if that helps us out. We are not getting this to function very well. Now let's show you what, you guys that tested this one, did it test fine in the lab? So let's go ahead and do this one. Keith, you want to help out there? Let you get in here. You guys each take one of those. You can still watch the meter. And I'm going to go ahead and engage this. We have nothing, which we want. What does it go back to being you know? out? It shouldn't be. Let's switch that. We're going to turn this off. Go back on. Are you side loading that positive one there? So you get a good contact, okay? Here we go. There we go, we got good continuity. That's what we like. See, now I'm gonna let off the brake light just like we let the pedal off and we go back to OL, which would kill the brake light. That's what we want. So we can go ahead and set this down. So if this, our customer's bike here has a complaint that either maybe his buddy was riding behind him and said, hey, your brake light, uh, comes on and then goes back off. It might be that a little bit additional travel is actually pulling this a little bit harder and now the switch is broke internally and then you don't have good contact. So one way or another it's not correct. The Department of Transportation has standards for this brake light switch that when you engage the brake light it has to function like in so many like milliseconds or something. As soon as you touch this that brake light should be coming on. It doesn't matter if you just touch it a little bit or you touch it all the way down. We should get the full brake light working. Does that make sense? Um, otherwise, you have some safety issues. So that's your lesson for today. That's a real quick uh, continuity test on a brake light switch.